YouTube, welcome back to the Allegheny Northern in N scale. And today we're working on part three, the final part of this road building scene. So uh, you will notice that I have taken all of the vehicles, moved them off to the side. And that's because um, what we're gonna do here in this phase is we are going to work on painting this road and getting it ready for um, some final markings here. So um, road painting, it is is difficult and I'm gonna speak from experience here um, you know it, it's difficult to try to capture the look of uh, of worn asphalt and I don't know what makes it so difficult um, but to make it convincing um, it's, it's it's very it's 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 not it's it's not easy um, I've seen uh, several different techniques used on, on various YouTube videos um, the most recent one that I've seen that seems to be catching on is um, a dumping of um, uh, paints and then smearing it all around with water and it kind of blends and gets you some kind of natural looking textures. Um, but the problem with that is, is it very poorly represents what asphalt looks like. Um, it kind of smears the colors around, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't give you a granulated look. So what happens with asphalt is Everyone's seen a fresh paved road. It's very, very black, it's very dark. Um, and that's because the, the, the aggregate in the asphalt um, that goes down is coated in tar. Uh, and then you have the compactors that roll over, compact it all down um, to a certain compaction rating. Um, and that's tested with a, a nuclear density gauge. Um, and it tells them that they've met specifications for whatever it is in, in, in the area that they're paving. Um, but what happens as vehicles and, and the sun beats down on the tar um, and vehicles drive over it is you start to wear away that uh, that top layer of tar now it doesn't it doesn't take the doesn't stop the stone from being bound together the aggregate and the asphalt from being bound together but what it does do is it makes it more visible so you go from this kind of a black smooth ribbon to a um, sort of a more of a grayish color and then you can actually if you look you can see the different colors of the stone that are in the asphalt so that's what you're trying to look for it's more of a a, a texture uh, kind of look than it is a uh, blended color look um, the person who I think um, most um, got the texture down um, is uh, Luke Townsend um, if you guys follow him, I know a lot of you do, um, his technique for doing asphalt produces the, uh, and, and, and roads produces the most, um, realistic, um, look that I've, that I've seen. So we are going to do a variation of that. Now, um, that doesn't mean you got to do it that way. Um, you can simply use either, uh, an airbrush or a brush brush. Um, or, or use that sort of that wet technique um, to get something that is close, um, I guess. Um, but if you were looking for that genuine textured look uh, of asphalt, you're going to need um, an airbrush. And if you don't have an airbrush, you probably can reproduce it with a sponge. We are going to do a little bit of both here. So uh, what we did is we painted this whole structure in a very... Uh, basic gray color um, and now I'm coming back over it with a basically a wash here of this neutral gray it is Vallejo color 70.992 um, it's mixed heavily with um, airbrush thinner um, and a uh, flow improver so the airbrush thinner is 71.161 and the flow improver is 71. 562 if you are uh, going for a one-to-one. -one. Now, I've got my pressure set at about 20 and I am just hitting our road surface. Um, I'm not paying much attention to um, patterns or anything. I just want to get a nice sort of a coating on it. Um, feel free to mix it up a little bit. We already have our base coat down. Um, so this step is pretty much detailing and weathering at that point. So um, I've already applied a little bit of a coating to it. So um, I just used up what was left in the brush and we are out now. Okay, so we are going to um, flip colors now and we have a um, dark gray 
uh, that we're going to use. So that is uh, Vallejo 70.994. That's our next color. So um, mixing this, we're not, I don't have a recipe for you. Um, this is another one of those, we're going to go season to taste sort of things. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of paint in. Uh, I'm not bothering to clean out my cup much. I don't care uh, if it mixes with a little bit of gray that may have been left in there, but that's fine. Um, just because what we're doing here is not, this is not a precision step, so to speak. And we are trying to get um, a color uh, variation more than we are trying to get um, an exact match. And if you look at a, um, just go outside right now, look at your road um, and see what your road looks like. And you're going to see um, there's, there's, there's a lot of different colors in the, in the asphalt and that's just the way that the, the rock and the aggregate is, is in there and it's been, you know, squished and processed and, and, and bringing out different natural colors that are in the, in the aggregate. So, um, now we've got a little bit of a darker color here. Uh, I'm at a pretty far distance, uh, at a very low pressure. So I'm going to get a little bit of a uh, speckled, uh, texture to it. Um, and that's okay. That's what I want. Uh, I'm not too worried about a little bit of splattering because once again, that's also what I want. And I'm not, you know, just trying to get a nice little coating. You can see, um, you know, you'll be able to see, you probably can't see the, the fine texture that I'm getting here, um, you know, from, from your angle. But as you're applying this, you'll be able to see um, where it is. Now, I don't want you to confuse this necessarily with weathering. Um, because I'm not putting in necessarily wear stripes at this point. I am just trying to show um, variation in the surface color of the um, of the asphalt. And so uh, I'm going very high with this, uh, getting a nice wide spray, and I want it sort of uh, patternless, so to speak, so that I'm getting a um, I'm getting a variation in in what I'm what I'm doing here. So my next color uh, that I'm going to mix is um, a green gray. It is Vallejo number 70.886. Once again, doing the same sort of thing here. Uh, I'm going to mix it in with whatever's left at the bottom of my airbrush. And then I'm going to apply that uh, here as well. And those three colors, uh, I guess four if you count the, the actual base, are going to make up the primary um textured underlayment, so to speak, of our of our road surface. Um, we are going to have a few other things here that we're going to um, do to, to bring out that, that look. Um, the, the biggest one is the speckle. Now, this, uh, this, this green gray is gonna kind of give it that um, sort of gray that you're gonna see in um, on, on most roads. I'm actually gonna cut my um, pressure down here just a smidge and and try to get it to actually sort of speckle um, so we're going to go ahead and make that adjustment okay so i've got my pressure on my airbrush down to about that's eh, about 10 psi um, and i am uh, basically starving this thing so it's kind of sputtering a little bit uh, as far as spitting out the uh the paint i did thin the paint down enough to make sure that it would get through the, uh, through the brush, uh, and I'm just trying to texture this a little bit. Um, so I'm working the needle back and forth to try to get the uh, the paint out, and you know, violating pretty much every rule of basic airbrushing technique. Um, because what I'm trying to do is trying to get the brush basically to fail, um, because I want it to I want it to spit, I want it to sp uh, sputter, uh, I want it to give me a, a texture, uh, and and that without without that um you know i'm just i'm just painting basically but i want a very uneven coat i want it very um low pressure and i want it to uh i want it to spit as much as i can get it to spit and sort of sort of send some flakes out um and so uh, i'm kicking the pressure down even a little bit more here because i i thinned out the paint pretty good and what i'm trying to do is trying to get that textured stone you could if you wanted to probably get away um, with if you had a fine enough aggregate you could probably compress an aggregate um, and, and paint uh, a stone product 
um, like a ballast of some sort, uh, if you could get it fine enough to do this. Um, but I, I don't know how well that would work out. I've seen some folks, uh, I know I, even I have done it before where you've made a road out of, you know, like some black ballast or whatnot. Um, and then you try to simulate it with, you know, try to simulate asphalt with that. And it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't look to scale because the, the aggregate is too big and it's too pronounced. So if you're in end scale, you pretty much have to have to paint your road or get a printed uh, version of it. So work your airbrush a little bit, um, kind of kind of mess around with it, see what you can get. Um, but your your end goal is um, to try to add some variation to color um, and, and not really in necessarily a pattern. Now don't forget what we're doing here is not weathering. So we are not we're not we're not weathering our road. We're not trying to put in uh, road patterns or anything like that. Uh, these last few uh, colors were simply to add texture to the plaster. Uh, you can try to rough up your plaster a little bit and maybe get some texture, but once again, um, you know, it's not your scale fidelity is probably not going to be there. Um, so keep your airbrush up at a distance so you get a nice little bit of coverage and then just hit it with those colors to, to get a, a road looking uh, texture. If you've got any areas where you've got lines sort of showing, um, you know, from your airbrush, you can work to get those out. Um, if you can't um, sort of airbrush them, airbrush them in. Okay, so the last step that we're gonna do here today, um, and it's not, uh, Nothing too surprising, but we're going to add some black, right? Okay, so this is uh, Vallejo number 70.950. Now, even though a road has been uh, worn over and, and, and used, uh, you're still going to have some of that, that asphalt look to it um, from the asphalt that's, that's binding all the aggregate together. Um, so we're going to represent that. Once again, we're going to use this same sort of technique, very, very low pressure. Um, and we're just gonna put a little bit of black paint in here. And we're gonna mix it with a uh, small amount of thinner. I once again want to create a speckled pattern effect. Um, so either um, it, it takes a little bit of adjusting to get it to do what you want it to do. Um, so you've gotta play with the pressure of your particular airbrush. It'll determine you know, on your compressor and your needle and you know, some other things, but um, Get it to the point where it's kind of uh, kind of sputtering a little bit, almost not pushing the paint out. That's where you want to be. Okay, we're coming in here now with our black. Um, we are getting some nice, you know, splutters. I guess as we're as we're as we're working this through, we got a very low um, brush uh, pressure. We're we're, we're, so, we're somewhere operating around eight psi at this point. Um, I left the paint a little bit thicker um, because I I wanted it to kind of kind of blotch a little bit, uh, which is exactly what I'm getting here. Um, and once again, I'm just trying to add texture that is not normally not normally there uh, to this to this road surface. You want to be careful with the black because if you're modeling a uh, an older um, road, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of the black visible on the top because, like I said, all that old asphalt's been uh, basically stripped off. Um, so we're just trying to give it a little bit of an undercoating of that black. And if you've gone a little bit too heavy in some areas, uh, don't don't be ashamed to go back and find your um, grays again and hit it with a little bit of gray. Uh, there's also um, some AK Interactive products um, that are those textured acrylic paints. Uh, one is actually asphalt uh, that you could use to, to do this as well, depending on how many roads you have. Um, you know from previous videos that that material is a little bit of ex expensive, so if you had a whole layout to do, uh, may not be the most cost-effective way to do it, but if you're just doing a, a small area, 
um, you know, that might be worth something to, to look into. The next thing you want to do is make sure you're bringing all of your colors together, sort of smoothing it out anywhere it's not quite smooth. Um, and I'm just looking here, that gray and this black have darkened this up a little bit uh, more than I want. So I'm probably going to hit this with a final layer of, uh, of a light neutral gray. So that is our 70.992. Um, just to give it one more um, texture layer, and then we're going to call it good. Okay, so that is the look that we want right there. We kind of get a, you sort of see, okay, some areas are still black, you see some areas that are gray, but basically it looks like, um, it looks like a road. Up here, uh, I wanted to show you what it looks like when you do the, the wetter approach where you kind of soak all the colors in and then you add it. Um, it doesn't look terrible, um, but you can see that it's a much more sort of a uniform color, right? So it doesn't look like, um, it doesn't look speckled, it looks more smooth and the colors are more blended. Um, so if you're looking for something that's more... Um, gravelly, um, you would look for something that looks more like that. Um, and if you were looking for something that was more uniform and more kind of painted on, then you would get something that looks like like that. Um, to me, that's not as realistic. Yeah, you've got the same colors and you've got the same variations, but they're but they're pooled, um, you know, basically where the, where the water or the thinner pooled, and you want it to look more like that, or you've got it sort of um, kind of a haphazard uh, pattern. Whichever method you choose, it's not that one's more right than the other. It depends on the look you're going for. Um, but that's that's kind of sort of what you've got as far as your options are. So our next step is to establish our MPT. And what that is, is maintenance and protection of traffic. And that encompasses all kind of traffic devices from your road signs to your barricades to your jersey barriers. Um, your lighted signs, all of that is dictated um, by your state uh, or municipality as to what you need, when you need it, and how far apart it's got to be. Uh, so when you see those signs for construction uh, up ahead, that has all been laid out by a highway engineer. And it's designed to, one, keep traffic um, moving uh, as best you can and also to protect the workers and, and drivers. So um, when you see those signs go up, there's a reason they go up at a certain time and a certain place. Uh, that's all been pre prefigured out for you. Um, and we're going to represent that here. I've got some Blair line um, signs, but there are uh, you can basically put various lettering on these signs. Um, depending on what it is you're doing and, and, you know, what specific requirements either your state DOT or the municipality has for whatever work's occurring. So you can customize these signs to a, to a very high degree. They'll print them and send them out to the, to the job site. So um, you can do that yourself and print them on a home printer. Um, you would just uh, take your sign, scaled it correctly uh, using some software on your computer. Uh, I think you can even get by probably with Word. Um, and then you would uh, print that out, attach it to some styrene, and be good to go. Uh, we're going to use these Blair Line signs. We're not going to get too crazy here. And we're going to grab the, uh, the signs that make the most sense, and we're going to get those placed. Okay, so we've got our uh, MPT started here, and these are 3D printed barrels from Shapeways. Um, they have a couple of different things. You could do jersey barriers if you wanted to. Um, so depending on your construction site, typically uh, a site like this that has a, a drop off uh, would probably have jersey barriers um, because let's face it, y'all out there can't drive worth shit anymore. Um, and we need to protect you from, from driving off the edge of the road. Um, the other thing that we do is um, the signage is usually very simple. Um, it's written very simply. We try to avoid complex lane uh, changes uh, and, and crossovers and things like that as much as possible um, because once again, you all can't drive out there and you can't follow instructions. So, uh, and, and typically you're going too fast. So um, when you come into those 
work zones and you see that the speed limit has been reduced, there's a reason for that. Typically it's because temporary lanes are a lot smaller um, than, um, than your standard travel lanes. Uh, and also uh, you'll have vehicles entering and exiting the highway. You may have guys working alongside the highway. Um, and, and so they, they drop the speed limit down so that you're paying attention. Unfortunately, most of you don't pay attention because you're too busy playing with your phones or playing with your cells or I don't know what the hell you guys do when you're driving, but it ain't driving. Um, so uh, we try to keep everything very, very simple um, and make it so that, um, you know, e even the, the lowest common denominator of driver is somewhat um, able to understand what, what's going on. Uh, and the other thing that happens too uh, is people get used to certain traffic patterns. So roads that have been you know, certain ways for forever, um, they, you sort of drive it on autopilot. So when there's construction and that changes the pattern, um, you know, people get all discombobulated and then they, they freeze um, and, and people will stop when they shouldn't stop. They'll go when they shouldn't go um, and they'll miss flaggers. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong when driving basically because people don't pay attention. Um, so we try to keep the signs very simple. So when you get that sheet of signs, um, do not feel that you need to use every single one of them that's on the sheet. In fact, um, the fewer that you use, probably uh, the better. And uh, I'm just taking a little simple pin vise and I'm gonna go ahead and put a small hole here at the end of my uh, roadway. Now, if you're doing this where it's not on the edge of a layout, um, you know, you can put it off to the side a little bit and, and that would be appropriate. Um, but basically all I'm going to do is take my, um, take my sign here that, uh, that I put together and I have it all painted up and just going to set it right into that hole. Make sure it's oriented towards traffic. You don't want it at some kind of a goofy angle. And that's basically going to be us. Now, if you are modeling a highway under construction, as opposed to a, a smaller road, you need to have one sign on each side of your road. Um, that way, if you're in the left lane and a truck was in the right lane, you would not miss a sign, uh, especially if it's something um, to the effect of, you know, a road is a lane is closing or um, something like that. Uh, also, um, you will see various states will have various programs to keep workers safe. Um, so Pennsylvania ran a, a program, you'll still see them, um, you know, it'll say something like uh, working hard for you, give them a break, and break is spelled with, you know, breaks like on a break a car. Um, and, and so there's different programs like that in, in various states that you can probably find a copy of those signs and print them off to make your MPT a little more um, geographically specific to your area. Okay, now that our MPT is all in place, uh, we gotta start talking about putting in temporary road lanes. Now, uh, when you see your uh, roads uh, striped, they are typically striped using a process called uh, thermoplastic. And that's the material that goes down, uh, requires a special truck, um, and it's a hot applied material. When they do temporary lines, because they are temporary and will be coming off, it's usually just a waterborne traffic coating that they put down. It lasts for a little bit of time and then it, it, it comes off. Uh, they don't have nearly the skill, um, uh, or, or I shouldn't say skill, they, they don't have nearly the um, patience with the temporary lines, once again, because they're temporary. So they'll pretty much just strike them as quickly as they can to, to keep on moving. So uh, I have run down a piece of tape that is only on one side I'm using it more as a guide than anything. And I'm just tracing along that tape. And I'm peeling this up as I go to make sure I didn't get too, too careless. Uh, but this is one time where if your lines are a little bit wonky, they actually will look prototypical. Um, because even though the lines are machine painted, like I said, they're not really, um, they don't spend the same amount of time as you would with something that's permanent. So they tend to be a little bit thinner. They tend to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more wonky. Um, when they when they go down and if you put you know just a nice small sort of a uh, it's kind of a rounded brush here um, and you're going to just use a little bit of paint on there don't worry if some areas are kind of faded because these lines you know they do wear out um, much quicker than your thermoplastic does and you'll you'll notice that they'll start to wear away and so we, we kind of want to represent that a little bit too um, that these lines were you know basically hastily put in and 
basically used a cheap material and they're starting to starting to fade so having them a little bit wonky um is okay i mean i wouldn't go crazy and and have it like you know you know all, all squiggly like a four-year-old um with finger paint but you don't have to be necessarily uh spot on so you don't really need to to line both sides i mean you certainly can if you want to uh if you're going to have any road markings that are actual you know final road markings uh, on your road those you'll want to take the time and either get a decal for them or or properly tape them off but for this temporary stuff we we don't need all that and then we're just going to pull our tape back up and we should have a somewhat realistic looking temporary road line and that's pretty much all that we want to see so i'm gonna grab the camera here pull you over and that gives us our temporary road marking okay so you've heard me complain about this before and you're going to listen to me complain about it again i have here woodland scenics surveyors and i want to put them on my scene uh but they're dressed like they're extras in a humphrey bogart film and what i mean by that is i mean just take a look at what this dude's wearing it's like a pair of gray pants which is fine and then he's got like this brown shirt on with silver buttons like okay that's yeah he, he, he this is not what you're going to be wearing uh out on a job site in fact if you come on my job site wearing this uh, i'm sending you back to the trailer uh for a safety vest so i am using vallejo number 70.954 it is yellow green uh it is a very good representation of a high vis uh, yellow vest and i'm just simply gonna with a very small brush i'm gonna repaint him um just to give him a vest and I don't know why manufacturers insist that everybody is modeling the 1920s through the 1960s. You know, they make these beautiful model, uh, modern models of rolling stock and, and locomotives. Um, but then they come to the vehicles and the buildings and the scenery stuff, you know, the extras, and they just, they just don't make anything modern. And it's, it's really disappointing. So, um, Fortunately for something like this, uh, it's a pretty easy fix. Uh, it's it's a pain, but uh, you can do it. And that puts them into uh, a little bit more uh, realistic garb. Now, it doesn't really matter what they're wearing underneath. These guys are all wearing, for some reason, long sleeve shirts. Maybe it's cold outside. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that, that's fine. Uh, typically, they'd be, you know, probably wearing T-shirts. The only people that are going to have button-down collared shirts on a job site now are the project managers, the architects, the engineers, those people. Um, pretty much everybody else is going to be um, wearing T-shirts and safety vests. So uh, once you get your uh, paint done, uh, I'm going to try to bring him close enough here that you can actually see him. Uh, let me grab a pair of tweezers. And I'm just going to grab him by his head here. Nope, oh, and he took a jump. You know, actually, this guy might be a little easier to show you here because he's got a measuring stick in his hand. But that's that's kind of what you want to do. I don't know if it's not going to really doesn't really want to focus on him. Um, but that is a lot more realistic of a. You know, I'm trying really hard to get the focus on him, but it does not it does not seem too interested in doing that. So uh, I'll try to hold him back here a little bit. But anyway, that's 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 what you want your guy to look like. That that looks more realistic. Um, so I'm going to paint my guys here so they all have a safety vest on and then we'll place them on the job site. Okay, let's take a look here at our current progress. Got our vehicles reset. Got our construction workers set. MPT's all in place. There's our surveyors with their nice yellow safety vests. Tried to set up some scenes so it looks like we've got some action happening. Guy getting in the machine. And we put crews where they would normally be working alongside the equipment pieces. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add some final details before we call this one done.
Okay, in this next step, we don't want to go too too far overboard, but we're, we're back with our AK Interactives. We're using wet ground, uh, and we just want to add a little bit of texture to our, our scenery here. Um, we don't want this to be real thick because what will happen is it will overpower um, and scale everything else, but find some low areas um, where mud or just damp ground in general might be and apply a little bit of this terrain acrylic. Use this technique sparingly. Um, typically, you know, unless it's just rained, uh, job sites tend to dry out fairly quick, uh, at least on the surface, uh, because when crews know that there is rain coming, what they'll do is they will um, compact the earth that they've disturbed, and that helps to prevent water from, from infiltrating the site and and making it a uh, sloppy mess. Now, your tire ruts and everything else, you know, that, that may still be around will fill up, your low spots will fill up, and you'll get some some wet looking areas. But in general, um, you know, there's, they, they try to keep the site relatively clean and dry because if it's too wet, then you, know, you can't, can't keep working. So um, just gonna use a, this in a few areas just to give a little bit of variation. Uh, and then uh, I'm not going to uh, venture too far down into where they're doing the final work because that area for sure uh, would not have any mud in it um, just because uh, they're basically out of the mud at that point. So I'm going to kind of keep it down to where, where the crews are still making a mess of things down here, putting in your utilities and stuff. And then uh, if you want to do a little bit further of a um, variation, you can go back and grab your um, muddy ground. And that's just another, you know, the AK Interactive. We've used these earlier, so you kind of know what they look like, uh, but you can go ahead and grab that. And it's just another another shade that you can put on to uh, to help add some some surface variation. And like I said, just, just be careful that you don't go overboard with it because one, it's easy to do, and and two, you don't want to don't want to ruin the look that you've already created. If you're still not happy with the way the site looks, and you want to grab your airbrush and go back in there and add some additional earth tones. Um, by, by all means, definitely go in and do that. I, in fact, I would encourage that um, if you're not happy with the way it looks because that airbrush can, it can do some wonderful things. So if you still wanna add a little more color um, to, your, to your scene, grab your airbrush, grab your, your browns and your grays and, and go to town. Okay, for this uh, video series, we're gonna do one more um, little bit of a detail item uh, and that is our vehicles are kind of uh, they're kind of floating right now so the terrain's a little bit rough and we're going to um, make it look like they're interacting with the scenery okay this scene is not a complicated one um, as far as uh, making it look realistic we are just going to take a, uh, a small spoon and we're going to take some of our scenery material and we're going to put it in strategic places. So like this dozer, uh, let's make him push in the dirt. So we're just gonna mound up some dirt right in front of him so that his blade is pushing some material. Now, obviously we're going to need to, um, to wet this and get it you know, uh, stuck in place, but uh, at least now that it looks like the dozer is 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 pushing some dirt, so that's kind of what we want from from that scene. Okay, this greater scene I'm going to do a little bit different, um, and I'm going to actually just kind of put a pile here, and then I'm going to actually use the grater to sort of position it exactly how I want it, um, just so that I get a realistic look to it. Um, let me take some of this back here, get this off the road. 
and let's hit this. So perfect. Makes it look like it's sort of pushing the material there. Um, the other thing that I want to do, and I'm going to show you here in just a second, is they often store material on, on job sites, and it usually amounts to nothing more than some piles of gravel and dirt and stuff like that. So we're going to add a couple of those as well. Okay, and so that is going to complete our scene for now. And as I scroll down here, you'll see where I placed a nice big old pile of gravel right there. It's one of the most common materials we'll find on a road building site, just piles of stone uh, wherever the crews are working. It's just something that is all, always needed. Um, but that is going to complete our, our road building scene for now. Uh, yes, uh, there are some things that can be added, some things that are missing. Um, so I, I don't necessarily call this scene done. It's it's convincing uh, where it's at, but it's definitely not done. Um, so some things that I'd like to add. Uh, definitely need some more construction workers. Uh, some folks noted, um, the, more, the more astute folks noted that I have a road reclaimer right there. Uh, but there's no lime truck in front of them. So if I can find a model that's relatively um, convincing of a lime truck where I can modify it, I'll put that in front. That machine basically um, looks like a road mill uh, underneath. It's got a big cutting drum, but uh, it's used to uh, mix soil. Um, it can be used to remove pavement uh, as well, but typically it's used to mix soil with lime and other additives, um, cement, different things um, to, to improve the ground so I'd like to get that added. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to add any more paving equipment to this right now just because this this scene kind of looks like you know he just got dropped off there but it does need some people around you know uh, busying about getting the the paving equipment set up so uh, for now we're going to go ahead and call this scene good enough and uh, we'll keep on adding to it. Uh, you'll see it in uh, video updates as I go along, but hopefully this was helpful to you and helped you set up a scene so you're not just plopping down equipment uh, wherever you, you know, uh, it's not just about what, what looks right. There is a certain means and methods that uh, goes into uh, a construction scene, and hopefully this helped you uh, make a little more realistic scenes on your layouts.